Hello and welcome. In this video, I'm going to show you how to schedule work in 360. And I'm going to show you a couple different ways of doing that um, because there are different paths and more than one ways to do this in the system. The first way I'm going to go through is kind of in line with setting the job up in the first place. So let's go to, let's pick a job that's new here and find something that maybe we've already set up. Uh, if you're not with me already, start out by clicking your jobs link in your navigation bar and calling up your list of jobs here. I'm going to pick this one. It's a new job that is in the system and I'm going to get work scheduled for it. So let's go to the job info tab and notice now I've got all my links. This is a, a busy section here because a lot takes place and it manages a lot of the um, kind of the bottom line things for the job. The overview information, the job items, scheduling, requirements, and some of the other features that I showed you. So you'll notice, you've let's say you've already created your job info, you've already created your job items. Um, the reason that we have the schedule link in here is it's usually at this time when you're setting up a job that you do the scheduling. So it's convenient to just continue along rather than have to go to the schedule and then navigate to this particular job and start scheduling. So this way, when I hit my schedule link, I'm inside the job already and I can start doing my scheduling. So as you can see, there's nothing scheduled so far. I have zero hours of an estimated 10 hours. So I'm just going to go right out here and hit schedule and it's going to select some dates for me. You can see I'm in the job here and let's see if I want to schedule ahead. I've got something on the map already here uh, but I'm going to look. I need what three hours left? I've, well, I've got 10 hours to schedule so let's put that into two days. Let's do, as you can see, I'm booked on the fourth. So let's go to let's go to the fifth and notice how it's 10 hours. So it's going to block an eight hour day for me on the fifth and then bring me back in on the sixth to finish. Um, that's up to you. A lot of times you can, if you want to stretch it out, let's say I want to get it all done in one day, make it a 10 hour work day. I can go to five and I can go to keep that at 10 hours. I'm going to book all 10 in one day and I'm going to assign this employee. Now if I had multiple employees they all appeared down here on the left hand side and I would select that employee here so I'm basically saying when, what, and when, when, who, and what. So I'm going to select user number two, who is my test user. Again, if there were six other names down here, I could schedule one or more workers for this job at the same time. I can also select specific items. In this case, there's only one job item, but I could, if there were multiple job items, I could delineate which ones I wanted them to work on. Um, for this, again, we'll just keep this one scheduled. We've got who, we've got what. If I want to leave a comment, it sets that up. And now I'm going to go down here and I'm going to save. And as you can see, I've created that full item here. As I mouse over these, it'll tell me what I'm looking at. I've scheduled all 10 hours for this employee for that date. Okay, so that's path one. This is the way that we schedule a job from the job folder after we've set that job up in the system. It's a more convenient transition. It keeps you working on that specific job. It keeps you focused on it. The other way that I'm going to show you deals with the schedule itself for the whole company. So let's go in and hit our schedules link. And what you're going to find on my left here is my active schedule. On my right is a list of all jobs that are active in the system. 
Now I can refine this by hitting this link and looking at the unscheduled jobs only. So this is going to take down and kind of filter out for me the list of items that have to be scheduled or that have not been yet scheduled in the system. I can use my right side here as a visual scheduling board so I can look for white space and move down this list and assign things to different employees. So let's do that. On my right, I've filtered this down to show me only unscheduled work. So I'm going to select the job that I want to work on or that I want to schedule in. Let's pick this one here. Now notice when I open it, I've got some, some options here. This icon on the right, my calendar, is going to allow me to schedule this item. It's going to answer, it's going to call up the who, what, and when dialog boxes where I can assign my employees, schedule the hours, insert comments, and schedule them for specific tasks. The check mark here is going to allow me to conveniently change the status at that time so it knows how to appear on the different schedule. There are some other convenient tools in here. If I've made a mistake and I want to just clear all the schedules and start over, I can do that. I can also open up this job and look at some of the details in a new window without look, having to leave my schedule pane here. So let's go ahead and schedule. I've selected this job. I select my icon here and I'm going to schedule three hours of work. Now what's nice is it's going to call up for me intuitively what would be scheduled. Um, doesn't always work that way, so it, it, but at least it gives me a starting place. So if you have a blank canvas or an open day, it will just schedule that day out for you. But in this case, I'm gonna only schedule a couple hours towards the end of the week here. I'm going to, two ways of doing this, I can change the time or I can change the duration. I'm gonna only schedule three hours and notice it'll make the adjustment for me. I'm gonna schedule this employee. Again, I can schedule more than one employees at the same time. I can delineate what tasks they will work on. I can insert comments. I can also look at other schedules that are already in this system. So I'm going to save this. And voila, you can see I've now scheduled this item. One of the things that you will notice about the schedule is that it's been created flexibly. Um, and I'm, I've created a scenario here that will, will give an example of this. Um, 360 knows that a lot of times schedules don't go how they're supposed to um, and that most of the schedules that we looked at when building this were very rigid and forced you to go through a lot of steps in order to change something. So in this case, you know, I've got something scheduled for this day, uh, but let's say that I want to slip this job in the morning of the next day for this worker. I'm not going to have to delete anything here and I'm not going to have to push the schedule out. I'm not going to have to reroute all of these other jobs that might be in place. I can simply put this on here and inform the worker. So in a sense, as far as the scheduling is concerned, I've double booked him, but it, it's not really the case because it's, it's intuitive to the worker. I'm just going to stop here the next morning, do three hours of work, and then go back to my other job. I don't have to change my entire schedule. This also doesn't affect the, tra the tracking procedures or any of the estimates that I've put in. So the idea is to have a flex flexible scheduling process and allow me to make moves and make changes very easily without having to undo any of my other work. So as I look at my schedule here, my worker here is going on Wednesday, doing the full day at this job, going the next day starting at this location, and then going up to this job and returning. I can also schedule them out as much as I want. Now, the other thing you can control is whether you want things to appear on your unscheduled list or not. So that's where this icon comes in. So this leaves it up to the scheduler or the dispatcher how they want this to appear. In this case, I've scheduled all of the work for this job now for this worker. And I don't want it to show up on my unscheduled list anymore. So I'm simply going to say scheduling complete. And now that job will not show up on my unscheduled list anymore. 
as you can see, it's now moved over here. Now I can also reactivate that later. Let's say that I, we decide we need to do a little more work there. I can come back to this item and I can mark it as unscheduled again. In doing so, I'm now on my unscheduled tab and there's my job again. And that's how I schedule. So what happens is imagine if you have all your employees down here in a nice, uh, a nice open white canvas here with these color grids. It's a visual scheduling board. You can zoom in and out to that by day, by week, by month. So as you can see, I'm looking at my month and I'm looking at a lot of white space, which means that I have a lot of room to schedule. I can do this with all of my employees visible and my entire scheduling grid open so I can see what areas can take bigger clumps of work and other areas where I need to squeeze things in and, and, uh, and make some changing and edits. The other thing I can do is sort my viewing screen here by employee or by job. In which case you can see now here's all my jobs and here is all the time that is scheduled for that job and there you see it so that's a quick look at how to schedule there's a, some more details that we'll cover and of course um, our in-person training sessions or online training sessions can fill in any of the gaps and show you more importantly how to use the system strategically to save time and make scheduling easier. There are a lot of ways to do this. Um, this is just two of the ways, and I'm using some common scenarios. Um, so one of the things we can help you with uh, at any time is how to manage some of the, the one-offs or, or situations that come up that are uncommon. Um, a lot has gone into the scheduling tool to allow you to manage them easily. And some of these things, if you give us a call, we can go through them with you. And also over time, we'll be posting other videos that will get into some of the, the fine tuning and some of the details. This should get you started and help you get scheduling in 360. Hope you find it easy. Hope you enjoy the scheduling and uh, thanks for watching.